What's happening people, Blaze All My Days here, representing CIFD Presents. You all know about our event, 360 Degrees, happening right here at the Roundhouse, 28th of May. Make sure you get your tickets. I'm here with Akala, one of the artists who are going to be performing on the night. Um, we're just going to get into it, see, cool. see what's happening with you at the moment, see what you think okay. about the event, you know, because we are like the next level of event creators. But um, first of all, I mean, like the Roundhouse is an iconic Place. Of course. Yeah. Anywhere where Jimi Hendrix has played his icon. Yeah, no, legends yeah. have touched down yeah, on the stage. Yeah. What's it like? Is there, how, how does it feel when we approached you and said, yeah, look, we want you to come and perform? Yeah, I mean, really into it. I love the philosophy of the event as well. Mm. I have performed there once before. Oh, yeah. Um, I performed there supporting Susie and the Banshees, which was, okay. like, which was great. Yeah. Um, but I mean, this is kind of the first kind of sort of independent headline uh, show that I've done here, but also. It's, I like the philosophy of the event, the whole thing of independent music, yeah. which obviously people know I'm, I'm into. Yeah, which um, we'll get into. We'll get and into um, yeah, just I think it's a great venue. The sound's great here. Yeah. It's obviously, I'm, I'm a Camden boy as well, so it's, it's kind of You're representing win, win, win. Yeah. Good, 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 good. All right, well, let's begin with um, you know, what you'll be doing on the night. You're gonna, it's going to be yourself yeah. and a live band. Yeah. I spoke to you sometime last year, yeah. and you mentioned that you, know, you were thinking of you know, yeah. putting a band together and making it happen. Take us through the process of you know why you chose to do that and you know, how it's working out. Well, originally when I first made my first album, yeah, um, I did used to do shows with a with a band, but it wasn't quite the right setup. My producer would play guitar for me, and yeah, um, we we got our friend in to do bass, and it wasn't quite right. But we always had a B and R on it about taking hip hop with live music, okay. creating it with live music. And um, so when I spoke to you last year, I was just in the process of finding musicians to create a band that would then go and write its own music and my, my next Akala album would be effectively a fully live album. Okay. We have that band, though this album isn't that album, it's if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. this album, um, the band are playing on one or two of the songs mm -hmm. and they will be playing live. But our band album, if you like, will be the fourth album. After. So we've made another album in between Producer with my long-term production partner, Res. But for me, I just think having live musicians, you, you just, you, you can't beat it. It's it just, it completes the energy. Yeah. Why do you, um, do you think a lot of artists get that or think it's necessary or...? Well, I think, I mean, I think rappers are told they shouldn't get mm. it a lot of the time. But I mean, the reason why bands like The Roots still yeah. exist and, and have had such longevity is because of the quality of the musicianship. They've never been kind of a major kind of A-listed hit record, mm, yeah. top fives every, every five minutes type band, but yeah. Every time they come to England, they can sell three thousand. Yeah, they maintain a high profile. And they've been doing that for fifteen years. Yeah. Um, and so it's really the philosophy of, and this is the way my agents sort of treat me since the beginning. Is mm. more treating it like you treat a rock act or an arm, um, a neo soul act, or just okay. any other act that's built really around the music. Hip hop really in the last ten years has become heavily hit driven. Yeah. Which formulaic. Which is basically the formulaic formula of pop music, mm. but it means it's very short term and that you don't create really a long-term uh, resonance for yourself. Whereas by developing your brand as an artist that can be seen live and that can be promoted live and that puts on a great show, yeah. you ensure really income for the next 50 years. So even on an economic level, yeah, it's, a strategic it's the sense, yeah, I mean the Rolling Stones are still touring now or whoever else it be. Yeah. And so for me, it's really about creating those stellar kind of live performances that people respect. So what you're saying is that this isn't just, you know, a one-off thing or... A one no, this is what it'll be, yeah. This, that's it, this is, that's this, you this, now, this yeah? is it. I mean, we'll do certain shows that make sense. Obviously, if we're at a certain type of event, then yeah. we'll do a PA, um, though we minimise the amount of PAs we do do. And some events we'll do with just the drum. But in the, mm -hmm. in the long term, absolutely, if you come to an Akala tour, there will be a live band. Sick, sick. Just quickly, how long did it take you to get the um, musicians and put it all together. Always had the drummer. Yeah. So he's been with me since the beginning. Yeah. Uh, guitarist was a friend of a friend, bam. And then I went and saw our bass player play. Yeah. Uh, and I watched him play for about five seconds and I knew he was the guy. <laughs> Literally five seconds. Wow. I watched him do this, I said, cool, that's the, that's guy. the guy. You know when someone just got the feel? Yeah. And we also have two other members of the band band, though yeah. they're, they're not playing at this roundhouse show. They'll be playing on the band album, mm -hmm. which is a violinist and an African percussionist. Oh, and that completes the wow. band sound. So when you hear the band music, it's it's, it's, it's Sounds special. Yeah, I mean, sounds special. They're, and they're great guys. They're not. They 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 can play. All, all five of them. They can okay. really, really play. Okay. Let's move on then. Um, obviously, um, the event is about celebrating three hundred and sixty degrees of of music. So from concept yep. to product, controlling it all the way. Yep. Um, you've got your own label, Illustate. Yep. Tell me a little bit, or tell us a little bit about how 
you know, what, what things you do to, to, to make that happen, basically? Well, um, Interstate was formed five, maybe, well, six years ago now, 2004. Mm. Um, and I was fortunate that basically a producer that I'd met that I was working with at the time, Reza Safina, um, basically was like, I think this is great stuff. Yeah. Um, and I think that... What, your previous albums? Then? No, that he made the first album. So this was before oh, right, the first yeah. album was even out. Okay. He, I was making the first album with him, and making a mixtape, and he was just really into it kind of really overwhelmingly enthusiastic. So he pulled his business partner in, yeah. uh, Andy Dorman, and we decided to set up Interstate Records. Yeah. And then kind of my sister came on board as well, and we had like a quartet, the four of us as kind Fine. of the directors of the company, if yeah. you like. And um, we just, Rez basically ran, not only produced the music, but ran the day-to-day -day of the label for the first three or four years. He lives mm -hmm. in LA now, working on film and TV wow. music. And then Anthony ran the kind of business side and, and still runs the business side and the financial side and tax returns and yeah. projections and all that stuff that I hate doing. Yeah. Um, and we've just kind of really set up in that way. Obviously we have partnerships with various different entities. So SRD for distribution, or yeah. Eden at Ish Media for radio, or Chili PR for TV plugin. So you're hiring different groups of people yeah. um, to work your project in uh, different specialist areas. Because mm. um, obviously uh, you don't have a big team like that they have at Sony or somewhere where they can do all of that in-house. Yeah. Um, so you mirror what they've got on a... Series. Yeah, because you have to cover a lot of the same bases. Obviously online now is um, a massive, massive part. And I think that for really small independent labels without the budget uh, for advertising and for marketing, mm. online is incredibly important for us. But also it's the place where we get to demonstrate really that with the same level of promotion, a lot of the music that we consider independent and niche would right. actually do better than a lot of what we're told would sell. Yeah. Um, we're told this would sell, mm -hmm. but we've never really in this country attempted, certainly not in the last 10, 15 years, to have British acts that are massively left of centre, that are really kind of, particularly with an urban music, that are really politicised, that are kind of really emotional. Mm. We've never actually tried to put those people Into the in, the, in the massive public mainstream. So saying that it doesn't sell is just a hypothesis. It's not actually a fact. It's yeah. just the music industry and what it wants to promote within a certain genre. So do you feel like you're fighting some kind of battle against the industry as it stands there? I wouldn't call it a, a battle because we have our own fan base, we have our own thing that we, we've created, but I would say there is a certain degree of, of ignorance uh, in general in human society. And, okay, yeah. But um, particularly within the music industry and then particularly within so-called urban music, the way in which people at radio, at TV, at press, at record labels deal with what they consider to be urban music mm. is in, in many instances quite magnificently ignorant. Right. And for that reason we kind of, is extra why uh, we try to maintain our independence. Not saying we wouldn't work with a bigger entity, yeah. but we'd have to be on our terms and with someone that understood what we are willing and not willing to do and understood the history of the music, understood where we're coming from. Because you'd never get someone marketing guitar music that's never listened to Led Zeppelin. So right. there shouldn't be anyone marketing hip hop that's never listened to Public Enemy or Gil Scott Heron. Mm -hmm. and, and if there is, that's a problem. Okay. If people think hip hop is kind of all about champagne and selling people jewellery, yes. they shouldn't be in charge of marketing. Okay.